Hello, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Take 10 on Tuesday with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Jason Luntz. Today I've invited an amazing spoken word artist and songwriter. I'm sitting here with Kina Kyles. How are you today? Wonderful. Good. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. And I'm actually very excited um, that I had the opportunity to sit down with you. Um, I've heard a lot about what you're doing and I thought it'd be very important for our viewers and our readers to see um, and learn more about you. Cool. It's my pleasure to be here, Jason. Thanks for having me. All right, great. Well, we're going to just jump right in. Um, so you are a songwriter and you're a spoken word artist. And um, it seems that you use your talents to spread important messages. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, that's very accurate. Very uh, accurate. Okay, great. Now, I first heard about your latest project, which is which is a very important topic. Um, and I'm going to let people know that there might be some language on this episode that you might not like. Um, we're going to do our best to keep it clean. But um, she's actually worked on a project that's about a very controversial topic in the African-American community, and that is the use of the N-word. Is that a good way to explain it? That's the perfect way to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then let's jump in. Um, right. So let us know. Um, you created a song, and it's about the fact that you want us to eliminate the use of that word. Yeah, um, I just feel like it's time. It's it's actually overdue. Um, but now more than ever, I think it's important for us to not only you know talk about the N word, but talk about it in its historical context as well as its present context. And it's time for that word to die from my vocabulary. Okay. So how did you? Um, what made you decide that this was the time and that you wanted to jump right in on this topic? It's almost like the topic chose me. Um, oh, wow. I was uh, working in uh, Minnesota and um, I'm in my hotel room and in the middle of the night you know I'm in the bed ready you know to go to bed and it was just in my head I could just hear it blasting you know hear it blasting and I actually got up in the middle of the night and I wrote the entire first you know stanza and, and the chorus to the song because I was just just so frustrated with um, the use of the n-word um, I had read a couple message boards um, and anytime it's something controversial uh, a lot of America, traditional America, they like to say, well, you use the word and they use it and they do this mm. and they do that. And it's almost like the, people are using it as justification for their behavior, a justification, you know, for their inability to empathize with our situation. Mm -hmm. So it just came to me in the middle of the night, um, the whole first verse and stanza. So. Oh, that's great. It, it's funny you said that. Yeah, I've heard that a lot about the justification of actually looking at African Americans is subhuman just because we tend to use a word and they feel that they can use it. And it does start a lot of it starts a lot of issues. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, I just think it's important. You know, I use my platform or try to use my platform to to encourage people, to build people up, to to speak life into people. And words can scar, words can heal. So I like to just use my platform to to bring awareness to this issue in our community as well as the community at large, the United States and, and, and even globally, that this isn't a word that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. And we should just, it's time for us to get it out of the vocabulary. So why do you think um, so many black people tend to use it in their vocabulary? Um, as far as so many, I don't know if that's necessarily an accurate statement. Um, a lot of times the people who are the loudest or the people who have a platform um, are who we tend to notice. Um, that's not a word my parents used. That's not a word my friends used growing up. And I grew up in the inner city of Chicago. Mm. Um, the first time that word was really ever used or heard universally for me was through rap music. Yeah. And so because so many people in our community and outside of our community are affected by rap music, I think it maybe skews the belief that that's a word that's just being used prevalently in yes. our community. Mm -hmm. And so I think too many people use it. That's the whole purpose of the song. And you want people to sing along to your music, but when you use words that don't build your, your yourself up, that don't build your community up, what you're doing is you're reinforcing that that word is okay. And it's hard to be at a concert and expect, you know, a white American to mm. not use that word. Yes. It's it's why why should we even be using that word? It's kind of how I feel about it, and that's the better way to approach it. Yeah. No, you're right, and I do. I've had that debate with people too when they they get upset about other races using it, but then I'm like, but we all listen to hip hop, so if it's part, if you hear it all the time, and you got generation of kids now who grew up on it, yep. that are not black, so I definitely understand that. Now, what made you decide to make the song 
so blatant um because the n-word is used in the song a lot yeah that's how i heard it in my you know a lot of times when i write songs sometimes or poems i'll hear it um and i'll hear the entire verse um there have been a few pieces um that i've written poetry and spoken word where the entire piece fell out in one you know and this is kind of one of those the only thing i had to add was the second verse on this this song so sometimes it's almost like the project will choose me Mm. versus i'm choosing the project so I'm thankful for that, you know, that gift, that ability, and you just try to hone it and, and don't take it for granted. But this project almost chose me. Um, it was written the first week of August. You know, I woke up, and then not even 10 days later, Mike Brown is killed, and we're watching the videos that were recorded by members of his community, and they're sitting there referencing this young man as the end word. Look at that on the ground. Look yeah. at that. And it just, I just knew then that no matter what, this song had to come out. I, I knew like, it was like some, you know, it, it just had to come out no matter what. If I had to spend my last dime or my last breath getting this message and this point across, we're not niggas. Yeah. I'm not a nigga. I got you. And I got you. Yeah. I got you. That, that, no, that's, that's, that's very strong. Um, so, have you had other songs in the past that had such a strong message? Is this something new? Have you always approached your music from a message point of view? Yeah, pretty much almost everything. You know, sometimes, you know, my last album was Evolution, and I focused on love, life, and living with that album, but everything is real. I don't I don't choose to write about things that I don't believe in or experience. As a writer, I can, you know, like a, uh, a screenwriter, they can write about fantasy and creativity, yes. and I have that ability, but I choose when I put my name behind it to make sure it's something that I can stand on. Um, I've written about, I have a poem called Church Folk. Um, I have a poem uh, that I, I wrote for my god brother who passed away, Reflections on the Fight of My Life, and it's about his battle with cancer. So anything that I write, it, it pretty much always has a strong message point behind it. Okay. So um, before we continue, let's let the audience know where can they um, find um, Evolution and the current single. Okay, um, you can uh, hit me up on my website, www.kenakiles.com. That's K-Y-N-A-K-Y-L-E-S.com. I also am on Facebook as The Kena Kyles Project. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Kena Kyles, K-Y-N-A-K-Y-L-E-S. All right, that's great. Now, um... You live in Middle Tennessee, and how long have you been in this area? Um, I've been in the Middle Tennessee area since uh, fall of 97, when I came down as a youngster to Middle Tennessee State <laughs> University. And, uh, from Chicago originally? <laughs> yeah, from Chicago. Yeah, we have a lot of Chicago transplants. Wild Hunt, South Side. South Side, yeah. We got a lot of Chicago transplants. I think a lot of people that I actually um, I'm good friends with are from that area. So Chicago definitely bring a lot of flavor to Nashville as it grows. Yeah. And um, you live in the Murfreesboro area? Yeah, I live in Rutherford County um, in Christiana. My, my house is in Christiana. I also live in Huntsville. Oh, yeah. You know, I have residents in Huntsville as well. She represents Alabama and, and, Alabama. and Murfreesboro. Well, I, cause I ask because I usually ask people um, how they feel about the growth in Nashville, especially in, when I have entertainers. And I always wonder, people that live a little bit out the outskirts of the city, um, are you feeling the effects out in Murfreesboro that, um, of all the energy that's happening in Nashville? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Um, Nashville, to me, is the place to be. And I always tell people... Um, Middle Tennessee, Nashville, I consider Nashville Metro, and I do consider Rutherford County, Murfreesboro to be a part of Nashville Metro, and that's experiencing such a boom as well as Nashville, and it all is affecting everyone because people work in Nashville, people work in Rutherford County, Williamson County, so in Wilson County as well, so we're all circulating around, so Mm -hmm. you know you have... um, of course, a lot of people don't like the traffic. That's a result of the explosion and growth. Yeah, yeah. But the good thing is you have people coming from all over the United States and the world coming to this area. And we're all going to blend and together we can share what Music City is about, you know, with the new people and get them on board with the good things that are already here. And then we get to grow with the things that they can bring. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah, I I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I really appreciate you uh, bringing your time here. And... My goal is to let people know more about this single you got now because it's 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 is an important message. Yeah, the the single is called Die N I G G A. Um, you know, I say I don't care if you spell it N I G G A, it still means the same. Self deprecation, yes. low self esteem, soldier, soldiers for some fame. 
But yeah, no, it's called Die N I G G A. Um, you can get it on iTunes, CD Baby. Um, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. Um, I do have physical copies for the the people who love to you know actually have an actual CD mm -hmm. in their hand as well. And what's the response been to it? The response has been actually pretty good. Um, I did a show in Tunica, and the crowd was a, a bunch of people who actually use that word a lot in their music. And when it first came on, I think they were kind of thinking it was a, a typical song. And then when the message hit them, I could see a little reflection. And mm. um, I've had mostly positive responses. Um, a lot of people said they're tired of hearing the word now. Uh, especially because I tried to wear it out in the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, nah, you accomplished that. Well, I definitely appreciate your time today. And um, when you have some other projects, make sure you come see us again. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jason. No problem. And once again, you've been tuning into another episode of Take 10 on Tuesday with the Tennessee Tribune. See you next time.